Mesh Analysis of DC Circuits Using KVL A video created by R.S. Madhukeshwara, Assistant Professor of Physics, Government College for Women, Mandya. A German physicist, Robert Kirchhoff, introduced two important electrical laws in 1847 by which we can easily find the currents through different components of a complex network. Both AC and DC circuits can be solved and simplified by using these simple laws which are known as Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law. Kirchhoff's current law states that the algebraic sum of currents entering and leaving a node in a circuit is equal to zero or it can also be stated as the sum of the incoming currents towards a node is equal to the sum of the outgoing currents away from the node. This law is based on the law of conservation of charge. The sun conventions which are used to apply KCL to a node of an electrical network are the incoming currents are taken positive and the outgoing currents are taken negative. For example, if you apply KCL to the node P of the circuit shown here, you will get I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to 0. Here I1 is positive because it is an incoming current towards the node. But whereas I2 and I3 are negative because they are the outgoing currents away from the node B. The equation can also be written as I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of all voltages is equal to zero around a closed loop or it can also be stated as the source voltage is equal to the sum of all the voltage drops in a closed loop. This law is based on the law of conservation of energy. The sign conventions which are used to apply KVL to a mesh or loop of an electrical network are the falling potential is taken negative and the rising potential is taken positive while traversing a loop either in the clockwise direction or in the anti-clockwise direction. The source voltage is taken negative while moving from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal because of fall in potential and the source voltage is taken positive while moving from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal because of the rise in potential. The IR drop is taken negative while moving along the current direction because in that case there is a fall in potential and the IR drop is taken positive while moving against the current direction because in that case there is a rise in potential. The applications of Kirchhoff laws are using Kirchhoff circuit laws the various voltages and current circulating around a linear circuit can be found. We can also use loop analysis to calculate the currents in each independent loop by using Kirchhoff laws. Mesh analysis method uses mesh currents as variables instead of currents in the elements to analyze the circuit. Therefore, this method absolutely reduces the number of variables and equations to be solved. Mesh analysis method uses Kirchhoff voltage law to determine the unknown currents in a given circuit. Mesh analysis is also called as mesh current method or loop analysis. To analyze the given DC circuit by mesh analysis method. First identify the independent meshes or loops in the given circuit. Then assign a circulating current to each mesh. For making the calculation easier, assign the same direction for all mesh currents, preferably in clockwise direction. Then write the KVL equation for each mesh and solve the KVL equations either by elimination method or by Kramer's rule to find the unknown mesh currents. Using them, the required branch current can be found. Let us consider a DC circuit as shown here. It has two independent meshes. Let I1 be the current assigned for mesh 1 in the clockwise direction and let I2 be the current assigned for mesh 2 again in the clockwise direction. Applying KVL to mesh 1 gives minus I1 R1 minus of I1 minus I2 into R3 
plus E1 is equal to 0 or it can be written as R1 plus R3 into I1 minus R3 into I2 is equal to E1 call that as equation 1. Applying K will to mesh 2 gives minus I2 into R2 minus E2 minus of I2 minus I1 into R3 is equal to 0 or it can be written as R3 into I1 minus of R2 plus R3 into I2 is equal to E2 called as equation 2. The mesh currents I1 and I2 can be obtained by solving equation 1 and 2 either by elimination method or using Kramer's rule. By knowing the mesh currents I1 and I2, any branch currents of the given circuit can be calculated. In mesh analysis method, it is important to note that the resistor current of the common branch is the sum of the two mesh currents when two mesh currents are in the same direction. The resistor current of the common branch is the difference of the two mesh currents when two mesh currents are in the opposite directions. Kramer's rule is a method that uses determinants to solve system of equations that have the same number of equations as variables. Kramer's rule is another way to solve a system of linear equations with matrices. It uses a formula to calculate the solution to the system using the definition of determinants. Instead of solving the entire system of equations, you can use Kramer's rule to solve for just one single variable. Kramer's rule only works on square matrices that have non-zero determinant and a unique solution. For example, consider two linear equations as shown by equation 1 and 2 after applying the mesh analysis method for the DC circuit shown here. According to Kramer's rule, these equations can be written in metric form as shown here. Here, we have the left hand side of the system with the coefficient matrix and the right hand side with the answer values. Let delta be the determinant of the coefficient matrix of the above system and let delta 1 be the determinant of the matrix formed by replacing the first column values of the coefficient matrix with the answer column values and let delta 2 be the determinant of the matrix formed by replacing the second column values of the coefficient matrix with the answer column values. Then according to Kramer's rule, the mesh currents I1 and I2 are given by I1 is equal to delta 1 by delta and I2 is given by I2 is equal to delta 2 by delta. Now let us consider a DC circuit as shown here in which the current through 6 ohm resistor is to be calculated using mesh analysis. The given DC circuit has two independent meshes. Let I1 be the circulating current assigned for mesh 1 in the clockwise direction and let I2 be the circulating current assigned for mesh 2 again in the clockwise direction. Applying K wheel to the mesh 1 gives minus 12 I1 minus of I1 minus I2 into 6 plus 5 is equal to 0 or it can be written as 18 I1 minus 6 I2 is equal to 5 call it as equation number 1. Applying K wheel to the mesh 2 gives minus 5 I2 minus 6 minus of I2 minus I1 into 6 is equal to 0 or it can be written as 6 I1 minus 11 I2 is equal to 6, call that as equation number 2. Equation 1 and 2 can be solved to obtain the mesh currents I1 and I2 either by elimination method or using Kramer's rule. In elimination technique, one of the variable can be eliminated by multiplying one of the equation by a suitable number and then adding or subtracting the two equations. Now consider the final KVL equations which are obtained after analyzing the given DC circuit using mesh analysis method. In order to eliminate I1 from equation 1 and 2, multiply equation 2 by 3, we get 18 I1 minus 33 I2 is equal to 18. Call that as equation number 3. 
Subtraction of equation 1 from equation 3 gives 18i1 minus 33i2 minus 18i1 plus 6i2 is equal to 18 minus 5 or minus 27i2 is equal to 13. Therefore, i2 is equal to minus 13 by 27 which is equal to minus 0.4815 ampere. Here the negative sign indicates that the actual direction of current is opposite to the assigned direction. Now in order to find the value of i1, consider the simplest equation among 1 and 2. In this case, equation 2 is the simple equation. Therefore from equation 2, i1 can be written as i1 is equal to 6 plus 11 i2 divided by 6. If you substitute the value of i2, then the value of i1 becomes 0.1173 ampere. Once if you know the mesh currents i1 and i2, then the current through 6 ohm resistor is given by i6 equal to i1 minus i2 because the mesh currents i1 and i2 are flowing in opposite direction through the 6 ohm resistor. Now substitute the values of i1 and i2 in i6. The value of i6 becomes 0.5988 ampere. The value of I6 can also be calculated using the relation I6 equal to I2 minus I1 but in that case the value of I6 becomes minus 0.5988 ampere where the negative sign represent the assigned direction is opposite to the actual direction of current. The mesh currents I1 and I2 can also be calculated using Cramer's rule. In order to find the mesh currents I1 and I2 using Cramer's rule, again consider the KVL equations which are obtained after analyzing the given DC circuit using mesh analysis method. Using Cramer's rule, the KVL equations 1 and 2 can be written in metric form as shown here. Then according to Camus rule, the mesh currents I1 and I2 are given by I1 is equal to delta 1 by delta, where delta represents the determinant of the coefficient matrix and delta 1 represents the determinant of the coefficient matrix in which the first column is replaced by the answer column values. In this case, the value of delta 1 is minus 19 and delta is minus 162. Therefore, I1 becomes 0.1173 ampere. And the value of I2 is given by I2 is equal to delta 2 by delta, where again delta represent the determinant of the coefficient matrix and delta 2 represent the determinant of the coefficient matrix in which the second column is replaced by the answer column values. In this case, the value of delta 2 is 78 and delta is minus 162. Therefore, I2 becomes minus 0.4815 ampere. Here, the negative sign indicates that the assigned direction of current is not same as the actual direction of current. Once if you know the mesh current values I1 and I2, then the current through 6 ohm resistor I6 is given by I6 equal to I1 minus I2. If we substitute the values of I1 and I2, then the value of I6 becomes 0.5988 ampere. In my next video, I will discuss how to analyze the given DC circuit using Thevenin's theorem.